We're talking with Kelly Everett, a professional stripper and a preacher, and there's a question for you right here. Kelly, uh, I'd like to know what the moral majority thinks of your crusade. Same thing I think of them. What's that? Could you share with us your feelings about I that? I don't really know what they think of me, but uh, I, I don't like their way of thinking. Mm. Have you had They're any communication? They're Protestants, and uh, they have some of the typical disagreements, you know, between the Protestants and the Catholics. Oh, I see. But I think they're being a little bit overly aggressive in their uh, mixture in with politics. Oh. I don't believe in mixing in that much, that much in the way that they are with politics, although I campaign for Carter a mm. little bit and uh, certain people that are religious. Okay. Phone question for you. Hello, you're on. People are talking. Uh, uh, she considers herself to be a great Catholic. I'd like to know what she confesses when she goes to the priest and, and confesses about her stripping because she is committing a mortal sin. Well, uh, what I confess to my priest is between myself and the priest, and judge not lest ye be judged. Uh, is the caller still on the lawn? I am. I am a great Catholic, and I cannot believe that she is a stripper and calls herself a Catholic. Yes. What is the, what is the mortal sin that she is committing? Being a stripper. Who told you that that's a mortal sin? Can you hear us? Who told you? Uh, she wants to know who told you that being a stripper is a mortal sin. Uh, I go to church. I'm a great Catholic, and I know this. Catholic. All I can say is God bless you. All right. Well, uh, did you? If I understood you correctly, you you feel that uh, the moral majority doesn't have any Catholics in its group. Is no, that? no, they're all Protestants. They're all Protestants. Yeah, as far You're as sure I know. about that. I'm not 100% sure, but from what I've read, they're all Protestant. Okay. Hi, I would like to know, um, where did you learn how to do, you know, the stripping and stuff like that? How Trial and error, it? mostly. Mm -hmm. Trial and error. <laughs> Just watching the other girls. Really? And uh, remembering some of the things that I learned in school, ballet school. Mm -hmm. and how did they feel about together? you coming into the clubs doing this type of thing and not, because it's different from what the other girls are doing. I get tremendous opposition, criticism, mm -hmm. scorn, ridicule, mockery, mm -hmm. and uh, quite often the management gives me a very hard time about the preaching. Mm -hmm. They keep saying over and over, just dance, just dance, we don't want you to preach, just dance. Yeah. I yeah. say, listen, I'm well known for preaching. And uh, you, you people want publicity, mm -hmm. you want money, you want people to come in, then I'm going to preach. And then they say, well, all right. Because, see, they, they let me preach only because I explained to them that it will bring them more publicity and more money. Otherwise, they do not want me to save souls. I have to work against the opposition all the time. Would you say, then, that your preaching is a publicity stunt? Uh, I would say that it brings a lot of publicity, but I had no idea that it would. See, when I first started it, I did not know that I would get any publicity out of it. But oh, it just Kelly, happened that way. You're a reasonably intelligent woman, a stripper who does preaching. You didn't think you'd get publicity out of that? Honestly, I didn't because I was shocked. See, I was dancing at a, at a theater in New York, and I was, I was preaching on a cable TV show, my own show in New York. And the Channel 5 called me up. They read an article in the Post, and they called me up and said they wanted to put me on the news. And I, I was so shocked out of my mind, I couldn't figure out why they wanted me on the news. And that was the first time I... I began to realize that it had publicity value. We have a caller waiting. Go ahead, please. You're on People Are Talking. Yes, I was wondering, um, uh, you had said you've seen visions, and I, I really feel I believe you did, because I know other people who've seen visions of Mary or uh, Jesus. And I was just wondering one question. Besides what you already said, what they told you through the vision, did you, do you, did you get any information from them, or do you have any insight in that, do they think that uh, homosexuality in and of itself, if that is sin, is it wrong to be a homosexual? Well, I would say uh, Mary never told me anything directly about homosexuality, but I think it's a terrible thing to persecute people because of their sex preference, and we must love homosexuals and accept them just as if they were anybody else. And ours, uh, the he, uh, heterosexual sins are just as bad as homosexuals, and you cannot say that they are more of sinners than anybody else. Kelly, do you have any interest in politics and the ERA, Women's Lib? ERA, I'm very, very interested in. I would like to see it passed. Why? Because I believe that women are the superior sex, that they were created first. And I believe that God made the man as the helpmate, and the woman should be the leader. You believe that women were created first? Yes, and I believe that the first 
uh, man that was born from the woman, not the woman from the man, but the man from the woman, and the man was made as the helpmate. And I think one of the reasons we have so many problems in the world is because men are leaders and the woman is designed by God as the mother of life, and the woman should be the leader in government, in, in education, and in religion and everything. You say you're Catholic, but I thought that the Catholic Church taught that um, the rib of Adam was taken. <coughs> In order yes, to traditionally, ease. yes, but that is the only place where I disagree, and uh, it is not considered heresy. We are allowed, as a Catholic, we have to believe that God created the world, but exactly how he created it, we can, uh, it's private, you know, revelation in some cases. Okay. Yes, can you tell me what your childhood was like? Um, uh, I was born in Germany. Uh, my parents were escaping from the communists in Lithuania. And uh, my, my family would have all been in Siberia if we hadn't escaped. And we went to Germany where I was born, and then we came to the land of the free. That's why I love this country, because it saved me from communism. And I think America is the hope of the world as far as to deter communism. If America doesn't do something, and if we don't pray, communism will take over the whole world. Kelly, if you had your choice when you were 16, when you became a, a pinup girl and a, a beauty queen contestant, what would you have been? If you hadn't been, I you wanted think? to be something professional, like a lawyer. I like that idea of being a lawyer or something to help others. Kelly, you have a daughter. You said, how mm -hmm. old is she? I'd rather not say. Okay. How does she feel about this? Uh, she thinks it's great. You know, what's a child going to think? Are you bringing so, her up thinking the ways that you do? Are you uh, yes, but she's gone her own way. She doesn't want to suffer the way that I'm suffering, and she would rather have more pleasure in life. So she's gone to live with other relatives now. So you're not bringing her up? Not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Hello, your own people are talking. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, Kelly, um, uh, you, you say that uh, you save, and uh, I was wondering whether you believe in uh, the story of the... Um, the uh, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, where Jesus, uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus, and he told Nicodemus that he must be born again. Yes. I'm born again. And do you believe in the 12th chapter of Romans, uh, where you were a, a, a pinup and uh, you're a stripper, and in the first two verses of the 12th chapter of Romans, it says, I beseech you, the Apostle Paul writing, you're a Protestant, aren't you? therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, in the second verse, and be not conformed to the wor this world. Yes, I am in the world, but I'm not of the world. I don't follow the spirit of the world. I, be I follow the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, and I'm perfectly in tune with the Holy Spirit, and I pray to be closer to God all the time. I'm betrothed to Christ. You heard her say that she believes women are superior to men. How does what that... was my reaction to yes. that? Well, the one thing that occurred to me was that she kept referring to God as a he. And I that's tradition. That's a bit of a conflict. No, it's no conflict at all. It's just tradition. It's just a word. But God is neither male nor female. God is the greatest person. He doesn't have a, a physical body or a sex except as Jesus Christ. If God is neither male nor female, why then does a man or a woman have to be superior? Why can't they be equal? Well, uh, they could be equal, but my theory is that the woman was created first and that she was created superior to the man in order to produce the man. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> 